Gurley was one of the sweetest people you could ever meet. She lit up a room when she walked in. He did have an ability of putting very compelling arguments and making you want to believe what he was trying to say. Gurley Chu was an alien queen. She knew she was going to be hunted like the dog she was. She sits in front of her desk, scrawling in her notebook. I am an alien queen. I will protect the earth from all that is evil. She draws a tall, slender creature. She is valiant, strong, courageous. Standing with her ninja sword over the bodies of her foes, she is perfect. Linda Henning was a successful model turned fashion designer. Always well put together, friends and colleagues of Linda had only positive things to say. She was a good person, reportedly the first one to take in stray cats, or most likely to save spiders from being stepped on. Fellow members of the Barbie Friends of Albuquerque, an interest group she was a part of, commented on the fashionable outfits and designer bags Linda always had in tow. Linda's interests would often shift, and she would become very interested in what she cared about at the moment, whether it be animal rights, children welfare, or the environment. So it wasn't too much of a shock when her interest turned to UFOs. Little did everyone know, this newfound interest would turn into obsession. By July 1999, Linda's obsession reached a peak. She began attending regular meetings with the UFO club in a Japanese restaurant to discuss extraterrestrials, government conspiracies, and her favorite subject, reptilians. One of her friends mentioned she may get along with the guy he knew, Diazen Hosenkoft. After being presented with Diazen's card, Linda showed up at this mystery man's door and the two immediately hit it off. They spent the day sharing information and talking about conspiracy theories. It wasn't long before they began dating. Linda learned Diazen was a doctor who produced youth serums anti-cancer shots, and Botox. He planned on developing a company specializing in medical breakthroughs, but there were always obstacles that would delay this. Also, he told her that he only had three months to live. He was dying of leukemia. Linda would bring Diazen to her UFO meetings where he would claim to have several PhDs, was an MD, and spoke several languages. He seemed too good to be true, right up until he revealed his secret. He explained to an incredulous group that he was a 10,000 year old doctor of genetics from the planet Giga who came to Earth to warn the world that aliens were coming to wipe out humanity by contaminating all of the world's drinking water. According to Diazen, only a select few would live, those who lived in the vortexes around Colorado Springs, Charleston, and Wyoming. While Linda believed every word, the majority of the group thought he was crazy. Little did they know, this was just the beginning of his twisted lies. September 10th, 1999. Kathy Szymanski was worried when hard-working colleague Gurley Chu didn't show up to work. Gurley had seemed disturbed, asking her co-workers to call the police if something happened to her. Gurley Chu was a Malaysian native who met Diazen Hosenkoft while on holiday to SeaWorld in the early 90s. She found him smart, charming, and was impressed by his medical degrees. He had introduced himself as a man living with leukemia, but said he had the cure. He shared that he'd been married before, but lost his wife and children in a car crash. Gurley quickly fell in love with him, and Diazen sent a letter to her parents explaining that he was born in Switzerland and was working for NASA's National Defense Systems Subdivision. In the letter, he also apologized for not asking for permission to marry their daughter. This was met with confusion by Gurley's parents, but they allowed her to get married to such a successful man. They officially married in January 1993. Gurley Chu Hosenkoft enjoyed learning new American recipes in the new life they built as a couple. After not being able to conceive children, 
Gurley was pleasantly surprised when Diazin came back from one of his many business trips with a young Asian child who Diazin claimed to have grown out of a petri dish. One of the 12 children that was engineered from his DNA in a project he called Project Gurley. He had named him Dimitri. While Gurley knew this was weird, she was thrilled and chose to believe he actually adopted the child through his many government contacts. She loved Dimitri like her own child. Life seemed perfect for a short while before Diazin began showing his true colors, seeking out other women. On January 17, 1998, Gurley and Diazin's fairy tale ended. Diazin came home in a violent rage when he found out that Gurley had messaged his mistress to let her know he was already married. As he beat her, a tenant who was renting a room in their house quickly called elderly neighbor Pedro Tirado, who was close to Diazin. After Pedro arrived, the police were called. Diazin was arrested and charged with domestic violence, but he was released in only seven hours. A week later, Gurley and Diazin were laying in bed when he asked her to drive downtown to get him a takeout menu from a restaurant he really liked. Suspicious, Gurley followed him into the garage to see her husband loosening the lug nuts on the wheel of her car. Are you trying to kill me? He suddenly pushed Gurley against the wall, getting herself out of the situation immediately by pushing the garage door open and rolling out she made a break for the neighbor's house where they called the police. As Pedro's wife was consoling her, they heard a loud pounding on the door. Pedro opened the door to get shoved against the wall himself. Where is she? But Pedro didn't relent. When the police arrived, they escorted Gurley to collect her things from the house. She filed for divorce the very next day and moved to an anonymous location. Throughout the next couple of months, Gurley would receive threatening phone calls, eventually filing for a restraining order on February 9th. However, that did not stop Diazin from calling her work and trying to follow her. Charged with three counts of violating his restraining order, he had a trial set for July 8th. It was no surprise that when Gurley Chu didn't show up to work one morning, that Diazin Hosenkoft was the first suspect. Diazin Hosenkoft was a con man through and through. In fact, his real name was Armando Chavez, changed only months before Gurley moved to the United States. He had picked the name according to what he thought sounded more like German and Japanese, what he believed to be superior. His medical degrees were forged, and he didn't really have leukemia. Diazin did have a degree, but it was from the College of Notre Dame for a Bachelor's of Science in Chemistry. He was conning several elderly women and his neighbors with his youth serums and vaccinations, claiming it cured cancer, which were really shots of vitamin B6. He managed to con people out of thousands of dollars. One woman, who preferred to remain anonymous, allegedly paid for his house in fancy cars. She would give him $30,000 a month, believing when he said his solutions reversed aging and eradicated cancer cells. Before she died, she transferred half a million into his bank account. While Gurley thought her husband was on business trips, he was actually meeting many of his girlfriends and fiancés, including a Japanese woman he met while on a trip to Banff in British Columbia, who he had Dimitri with. Project Gurley was the name he used to explain his son's existence in case his lovers ever came across the name Gurley. His wife and children didn't die in a car crash. He didn't even have any children other than Dimitri, and his previous wife had divorced him years before he met Gurley. On September 10th, when Gurley didn't appear at work, her co-workers decided to go to her apartment to check up on her. Ernie Johnson, Gurley's best friend who knew her routine well, mentioned that she hadn't picked up the phone the previous evening for their nightly calls, which was immediately concerning. Ernie had called the police after Gurley was missing for 15 minutes from work. She had a hunch it had something to do with Diazin, who Gurley had pointed to if she ever went missing. The unlocked deadbolt was the first indication to her co-workers that something wasn't right. Gurley was terrified of her ex-husband and she had been cautious. In fact, only a co-worker 
who had helped her move, knew where she lived. Inside the apartment, three large stains were found on the orange carpet, along with some small spots that looked like a mess someone hastily tried to clean up. Girlie, are you home? Girlie? There was no response, but there was also no sign of foul play, according to investigators who later responded to the police calls. Officer Portwine was ready to call off the investigation since nothing seemed out of the ordinary at Gurley's apartment. The building manager already told him there was nothing wrong. So when he went to Diazan's apartment to learn he had moved out the night before, the officer became suspicious. He returned to Gurley's apartment to find the carpet recently cleaned and still moist. The investigation was moved forward and given to Detective Michael Fox. Meanwhile, a man driving down a New Mexico highway near Magdalena saw what looked like a tarp on the side of the road. He pulled over, and after further inspection, he noticed the tarp was bloody. Duct tape, a bloody shirt, and woman's underwear were found, along with long strands of black hair. He notified the police immediately. Detective Michael Fox zeroed in on a potential witness, Linda Henning who had recently signed documents as an emergency contact to help with Dimitri's adoption. When he knocked on her door on the 11th, there was no answer. He was able to track her down two days after Gurley went missing. In a police tape interview on September 12th, Linda said that she was Diazin's caretaker as he was dying of leukemia. She didn't know him too well outside of their professional relationship and didn't even know how to pronounce his unusual name. She called him D. Shortly after her interview, she distanced herself from the police and stopped living at her home, but detectives were not done with her. Detectives were still trying to find Diazin, the prime suspect. Neighbors claimed they saw him on the night of Gurley's disappearance, covered in what looked like black soot, while frantically trying to move his belongings into a truck. Diazin's divorce attorney, adoption caseworker, and his female neighbor all received threatening phone calls. Diazin knew they were all talking to the police and that something bad would happen if they continued. After a redial, police were able to track him down to South Carolina, where he was living with another one of his lovers. Diazin was taken into custody and charged with three counts of making threatening telephone calls over state lines, since there wasn't enough evidence to charge him for Gurley's disappearance. In the home Diazin and his girlfriend rented, a 9mm, three bullets, medications and chemicals, empty bottles of vodka, two vials of blood, a vial of brown powder, Gurley's address book, a photocopy of Gurley's Malaysian identification, sticks of charcoal, and a steam cleaner were found. On September 23rd, forensic scientist Catherine Dickey analyzed the collected evidence from several DNA samples. These included stains from underwear found in Linda's car, the carpet in Gurley's home, the blood samples taken from the underwear, blouse, and a tarp found near Magdalena. But the DNA didn't match Gurley. Samples had been taken from Gurley's toothbrush, along with hair and saliva samples from Linda and Diazin. The blood samples on the carpet came back as a positive for Linda's DNA. Another test revealed Diazin's DNA on the blouse. Linda's house was wiretapped on October 12th, and investigators began following her around. There were a few notable instances that were of interest to the investigators. Linda went to Kinko's, a printing company, to look at some CDs on their computers. What looked like Diazin's formula and some maps popped up on her monitor. Before she left, she questioned the employee on whether the information would be saved on the hard drive. While on a phone call, Linda claimed that Gurley and Dimitri were both kidnapped and murdered, and Dimitri's head was cryogenically preserved and sent to Malta. In reality, Dimitri was in between foster homes at the time and was eventually adopted in 1999. There was also another suspect, Bill Miller, who Diazin and Linda often hung around with in the UFO club. Bill often defended Diazin whenever the other members called him a fraud and allegedly told another member that he was recruited to eliminate Diazin's wife. Bill had opened a checking account at the Western Bank two days before Gurley's disappearance, 
under an address in Colorado. When police questioned, he mentioned that his house was up for sale and that he was using his new address. He was open to the police checking his house and car. He testified before the grand jury on October 20th that Diazin had approached him about killing his wife on two previous occasions, and on a third occasion, he just told Bill and Linda to bring Gurley to him. On October 29th, Linda was arrested and charged with two counts of perjury and criminal solicitation to commit perjury. Later on, her attorney revealed that Linda had hidden a ninja sword above a ceiling panel in her garage. Diazin's blood was found on the handle, and blood found on the steel blade was badly compromised, as if someone tried to clean it off. For 26 months, Diazin denied any involvement in the disappearance of Gurley until January 9, 2002, when he finally pleaded guilty to Gurley's murder, as well as conning several women under a plea deal that would allow him to avoid the death penalty. Despite this, he still claims not to know her whereabouts. He's very testimony about to give us the truth under the penalty of perjury. He did explain in court how he had plotted murder. Hopefully, for my end of it, that she suffered the most excruciating pain known to mankind was what I was hoping for. I don't know that, to be fact. He claimed that Linda was only there as an alibi, and in fact, it was Bill who carried out the act, after he was convinced they needed practice for alien invasions. But evidence strongly leaned towards Linda. Her DNA was found at the scene of the crime. According to Diazin, her blood was planted by accident. He had planned to plant another woman's blood, but the vial broke while in his pocket. The only blood he had on hand was Linda's at the time, and he didn't think it would be detected after being diluted with water and bleach. Diazin was sentenced to life in prison, plus 61 years. On October 1st, 2002, Linda stood trial and refused a plea deal. She claimed to have nothing to do with what happened. She was sentenced to life, plus 43 and a half years in prison, on April 17th, 2003. It wasn't until July 16th, 2003, that Bill Miller went to trial. Bill's friend and psychic was contacted by his attorney's private investigator. Bill had told her that he didn't do it, even though he was asked to commit the crime. He claimed that he was only around Diazin because he wanted to protect Dimitri from potential abuse that he suspected. Bill also had an alibi. He was at his daughter's high school soccer game the night of Gurley's disappearance. Bill agreed to a plea of no contest to three counts of attempting tampering with evidence, reducing his crime from a felony to a misdemeanor. On October 2nd, his trial was over and he was given 10 months of probation. The ending to this tragic story leaves an open question. Where is Gurley Chu? Some say Diazin used his chemistry knowledge to dispose of the body while other theories insist she was destroyed along with all the evidence. Those who hold a more positive outlook believe Gurley is safe and sound, having run off to Asia. For more Twisted Stories, make sure to subscribe.